Hey, what's going on? <clears throat> I wanted to sort of add on to the radio show entitled Doing It the Hard Way. <clears throat> I noticed that I kind of touched on something, but interestingly enough, uh, not too long after, I sort of found something else that in a way it seems contradictory, I guess, to the analogy I was using. I was talking about, you know, a guy who uh, has high levels of college algebra and calculus and the like uh, versus somebody who, you know, is basic, simple addition and subtraction. Well, one day on my phone, I was playing Sudoku. And granted, I mean, it wasn't the only day, obviously, I was playing many times, but... Uh, I was there are four settings on this particular one for the Android app and it's the most downloaded one so whatever you look for that but uh, I was playing it on an extreme and I got a score oh, what was my timing it was about 35 33 minutes or something which is pretty impressive for me because I was never really that great at the game especially on extreme I did notice something, however. I mean, at this point, I'd been playing it for about a month. And I noticed that when I went to the easy games, my best score at the time was about seven minutes. And that was a pretty damn good score. I couldn't really, I could never get under that. However, after I played enough extreme games, got it down as, I mean, and it was quick too. I, I got to admit, the, the drop was, I mean, I think my first extreme game was at like 60 minutes or thereabouts whereas you know and I'd probably played like four or five at that point before I finally got it down to the 33 minute mark well I had played several easy games you know we're talking anywhere between well, many many actually but more like you know 12 14 whatever uh, mostly just because I'm bored at work getting to the point <laughs> God damn ADD. Um, all right, so getting to the point here. Uh, I'm playing the easy game, trying to see if I can beat my seven-minute score. And it takes me like 12 minutes. I'm like, okay, that maybe that's just a fluke. And so I play another one, and it takes me like 14 or 15 minutes. I'm like, what the hell? So I stop playing for a little while, and I pick it back up, and... I'm like in the 12 to 15 minute range for some reason. I'm like, what the hell? Why Why in the world am I sucking on easy? So I go play a game of extreme and I beat it in like 37 minutes. I was like, what the fuck is this? This is, a, this is not how it's supposed to work. Easy games are supposed to become easier. But after I gave myself a bit of time to analyze the situation, I realized what the issue was. And I think it goes along with this whole doing it the hard way situation. In a way, I was playing the easy game the hard way. The hard way being the way you would want to play an extreme game. You know, because it's all done on the phone, computer, you know, you don't have pen you don't have pencil and pen, but it gives you the option of writing tiny little numbers inside each of the inside of each of the squares so that you can assess the situation and sort of strategize and and, and basically just, you know, uh Ah, uh, what is it? Process of elimination. That's what it was. <laughs> Sorry about the long pause. Um, so, through process of elimination, or writing it all in like that, you could do process of elimination. Then you could switch over the pen, pencil thing. You could switch it over, and then you could write in the whole number, whatever, and so you could you know, do all the, you, you finish off the, all the, the numbers and everything. Thing is, is that when I started playing on Extreme, I was, like I said, I was getting better at it. And there's a, there's a particular strategy in that. I mean, I realized just looking at the easy, easy games, it shouldn't be very hard. And it shouldn't be very time consuming. But I think because my mind was working on the Extreme format, I couldn't, if you will, 
bring it down a couple of levels. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to extend it with yet another analogy because it, it I think it's pertinent to sort of get it, the point across. Although I haven't really watched a whole lot of Stargate SG-1, I watched less than I'd like. But I think it's toward the end or whatever. And this is just SG-1, not Universe, or whatever, Atlantis or Universe or whatever it is. I haven't watched enough of those. But um, Richard Dean Anderson, Captain O'Neill, He's talking to one of the Asgard. It's Thor. Now, if you don't know what the hell this is, it's basically just, you know, sci-fi. This dude on a military... He's the... He's the leader in charge of a military team, and he's talking to an ancient race of aliens. And he's basically sort of talking to the human liaison of these particular aliens. Now, they were having a problem with some aliens called replicators. Now, basically what they do is they take everything that's, uh, well, what anything they can crawl on for the most part that uh, could construct, uh, usually metal, I think, but it could, I think they could pretty much rip anything apart from my understanding. And it allows them to just duplicate like crazy. Um, the Asgard, however, are having a difficult time destroying them in that they can't. Their weapons are useless. And... There's a point where Captain O'Neill and his team, they take their firearms and they blast the replicators and the replicators don't, they're not able to replicate again. You know, it, it basically kills them in a sense, even though they aren't really you know, alive. I mean, I guess that just depends on what your definition of alive is. So, you know, Thor's like, well, we would have never considered putting a piece of metal into a tube and then, you know, causing an explosion and firing it out of the tube. That, granted, that's not verbatim, of course, but you get the point, paraphrased. It's just that it's they were so far gone in their own technology that they would not have been able to fathom such a simple com a concept. And, you know, that's something that happens within our own world. I mean, you know, there are people today who when they see a cassette tape they don't know what the hell it is there are some people who hear that term and they're like what the hell is a cassette tape you know and and that's just one example you know i was watching a britney spears video the other day it was uh, i don't remember what the hell it was i think it was, it was lucky and Britney's, you know, dressed up as this super starlet. And then, you know, like, there's another version of her who's doing all the singing and stuff. And the super starlet Britney gets a cell phone call. And now it's a flip phone. It kind of looks like a StarTac phone, but it's not. But it's bigger than pretty much every flip phone that's available right now. And I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, the video is like 10 years old. I was like, holy shit. She can only get phone calls on that phone there's no text messaging there's no internet you know there's no media there's no apps there's none of that shit and i'm like i grew up going through that era and even now i feel out of place sometimes when i see stuff like that i'm like shit man this is crazy and so you only have to wonder you know look at the pyramids we have ways of building things, but we don't build them like that at all. Our monumental buildings are built with all sorts of crazy construction methods. But who would have thought of just stacking up, you know, bricks for the most part and, you know, covering it in fucking limestone to sort of protect it? You know, it's like it's it's something that the mind just doesn't grasp these days because we're that far advanced. And so, getting back to the original point with the whole doing it the hard way, you know, it's possible. Now, I'm not trying to sound like an arrogant bastard. I know I can be, and I know that I am sometimes. But it's possible that the person saying, you're doing it the hard way, understands how to do their thing because whether it's simple or whatever, you know, and then the person who's quote unquote doing it the hard way, they 
don't have the ability to break their mind down that way, at least not quickly. You know, they see a problem and they solve it in their manner. And their manner may be, you know, extremely elaborate and <laughs> overdone, but if they don't know any other thing, then it doesn't really matter, does it? In a way, it kind of, sort of, It's not really a reiteration of what I was saying before. It kind of flips it in a way. It's kind of like the math genius who wants to do the math that's on his paper, but he's got so much math in his head that he's like trying to do calculus, but it's like basic algebra. You know, and the guy who knows two plus two, you know, he knows addition and subtraction, you know, he would be having a difficult time. And, and now, see, here I think is the difference thinking about that now. I mean, this just popped in my head. The guy who knows calculus is likely to still get the answer right. He may be doing it the hard way, but he has a better chance of getting it done right than somebody who is lesser skilled. You know, if I, I, I don't know calculus, you know, I have a very limited understanding of trigonometry and physics because I took physics and I used trig. But I could pretty much do the majority of algebra now. I haven't taken a college algebra class. I'm good with numbers, but I just haven't done it yet because I haven't decided to do so. I haven't decided it was the time. But anyway, getting back all to the point. It, you know, the guy with the greater skill, he's still most likely to succeed in whatever it is he's got to do. Also, if you feel like telling somebody they're doing it the hard way, first, shut the fuck up. By that I mean keep your goddamn opinion to yourself, and instead of criticizing in such a negative fashion, because I'm going to tell you, there's no positive way of saying it, it's always a negative, <clears throat> show them how to do it. Why? The best way to teach is to teach by example. The reason for this is if you show them how to do it right, then no matter the circumstances, for the most part, of course, but you know, let's not worry about the exceptions right now. For the most part, they will always have a backup plan. No matter what's happening. You know, if this person, let's take another analogy. If I go to, let's say, New York City, and I ask somebody how to get to a particular building or a particular address because I'm lost, and all they do is give me directions, and they spout it off in like a minute, and then they go on their way, chances are I'm not going to find it. Why? Well, because they didn't do anything other than just, you know, direct me there via, you know, basically Google Maps, you know, something I could have done myself. It's, you know, it, it does not allow for reaction to unknown circumstances that could very well be there. You know, what happens if a particular path is completely blocked and you have to go around, you know? Now, granted, if you have a good sense of direction, then it's not going to be that much of an issue. But there could be dead ends in certain places and, you know, maybe you don't want to walk down this street at this time of the day or whatever it is. You know, so if you have a guide there with you showing you how to get there, not only are you going to know how to get there because somebody showed you anyway, there's also the fact that there would be uh, variations. You know, there, there's always going to be certain things that are happening. You know, maybe this person, while they're walking with you, they could be saying, okay, yeah, remember over here, look over here, you got the, you know, let's say you got the Starbucks and it's across the street from, I don't know, fucking Macy's or some bullshit. You know, obviously Macy's going to be pretty, you know, Macy's going to be pretty damn obvious because it's a big goddamn store. You know, there's going to be people in and out of it, all sorts, you know, whatever. You're going to have somebody pointing out all sorts of stuff or you may be pointing it out to them. And so you'll be able to communicate and thereby sort of build upon your memory for this circumstance. Well, that works with just about everything. If you want somebody to learn how to do something, show them how to do it. You know, don't just tell them how to do it. I don't know of a single successful teacher who only does that. 
you know, like I said in one of my other ones, I'm taking electronics. My electronics teacher, my professor, <clears throat> he shows us how to do this stuff. He asks questions within the class. We spend all sorts of time dealing with it. Then he'll give us some homework. Now, I used to fucking hate homework, but I think the reason why I don't hate homework now is because it's not actually being graded. You see, I shouldn't have to do my homework. I shouldn't need to. Why? I feel like if I am learning something, it should be able to be taught in class. Now, what he's doing is, is he's helping to reinforce the idea. He's reinforcing his lecture with this homework. And in some cases, it's been very, very effective. Mind-numbing, but very effective. I now know Ohm's Law without, no, without a single goddamn problem. You know, that's going to be stuck in my head probably forever just because of the way he went about it. And, you know, all sorts of other stuff. It, it, it's, it's amazing what you can do when you show somebody how to do something instead of just telling them. So, like I said, if you're going to tell people they're doing it the hard way, shut up, rework the problem in your head, and then show them how to fucking do it. Because, obviously... If you think there's a better way to do it, then you need to get more people doing it. Period. So, you know, fucking... Yeah, whatever. <laughs>